from sunny and warm California, it's the Suzanne Summer Show, <laughs> and here she is. Can't see it. You can't see it. Okay. That was white with snow yesterday, all the way around. White mountain tops here today. Nothing. It's like almost 80 degrees. And um, I think this is the last time I wear my fur lined boots. Like my feet are hot. So, hot feet. Hot, hot boots. Okay. I've always thought you had hot feet. No, you make fun of my toes. I have long toes. <laughs> I have very long toes. Prehensile. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's better than short toes. Well, my sad story is in grammar school, the boys used to make fun of my toes. Boney Mahoney. That was me. Yeah, but you showed them. I showed them. You showed them. Yeah. yeah. I bet they uh, are sorry they made fun of me now, but it wouldn't and, have mattered. And you probably... You, I was going to marry you anyway. I yeah, you, know probably, you, you probably... When I meet you, but I knew I was going to meet you. But you probably wore socks as well, right? All the time. I wore... Yeah, I like to wear them in the pool so you can go. see my, my toes. Yeah. My toes were traumatic for me. Really? Yeah. Isn't it funny how we have those things in our, from our childhood? I know. I, I think know. I think most people have a part of their body that they're not happy with. What's that? What's yours? I know where you're going. What, what? In, in seventh grade, uh, Lisa Kirkley wrote on the bathroom wall, Caroline Armenio has a bubble butt. What's a bubble butt? Like a it's what? Sort of a compliment. Well, now it is. Yeah. In the 70s, it was all like skinny, skinny, oh, you know, oh. it was the Cheryl Teague. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, we I guess I was a part of that. A, but I was a gymnast. I had a, I had a nice chunk apple butt, and she, a, she drew a picture on the wall of my butt. Guess what? I showed her. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing how jealous girls are in grammar school and high school. Oh, my God. Oh, horrible. Oh, horrible. yeah. Yeah. But you were popular, weren't you? I was. I was quite popular, and she was. She must have been sad about that, so she said something mean about me. Oh, no. Okay. I wasn't popular, but I wasn't sad about it. I was kind of happy to hide over in the corner. I'm not sure what I was. I just got beat up every day. You did. Yeah. You did. Little, little out. Yeah. I got even. Out of you every single day. I got even. You did. I got even, yeah. You came out in Hamill. Yeah. And you had a major, uh, major career on yeah. television in Canada. And then he married Suzanne Summers. Yeah. Who knew Suzanne Summers was going to be become somebody? I didn't. A and before that. On the last day of uh, grade school, yeah. I ran into one of the guys, there were four of them that used to grab me when they could and yeah. beat me up. I ran into one of them all by himself. Oh. And I won't tell you what I did to oh. him. But when oh. it was all over, yeah. and actually I, I didn't end it, a man came along and pulled me off of the oh. guy. Yeah. So that means he, this kid beat you up enough times that when you finally had your That's moment, correct. You went, That's yes. correct, yeah. Retributive justice. Yeah, what does that feel like when you go nuts? Oh, it feels great. It does? To beat up a guy who's been beating me up for years <laughs> <laughs> with three of his buddies. Well, would you forgive him? Of course not. No. No, I wouldn't forgive His brother's no. in prison for life. No. For murder. See, I think forgiveness is very important. I know. I don't have it in me. You don't? No. I can forgive you for anything. Yeah. And I can forgive the family for anything. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to um, other people, mm -hmm. not, all, not all people, because sometimes our friends say things that they don't mean to be yeah. mean, but they come off mean, and I think they didn't mean that. They meant that, this, instead of that. So I forget. Something I wrote in one of my books, and I have a feeling it was keeping secrets. Uh, and I've seen it now in cards, and I've seen it as a quote. I've never given um, credit for it, but I said this. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. 
Yeah. And I believe that. Um, whenever I have truly forgiven, heartfelt, um, I can walk away and, and um, feel that I won in the best way. So. Yep. Anyway, Caroline's on the phone, calling from Los Angeles. Oh, before I just have yeah. to tell you, uh -huh. I love names. Okay. Yeah. This woman's name is Barbara Love Summer. Love Summer. Oh, Barbara. Is that not a great <laughs> name? What a great name. Huh? Love yes. Summer? Oh, Barbara Love Summer. And she, she said... rolls off your tongue, Yeah, too. Her, her comment was, that room you're in is so eclectic and unique. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I have so many people today asking about the Conquistador suit, Suzanne. Would you mind telling oh. a, little, a little background? That's well, uh, during my career yeah, as a matador. Yeah. I was That's much Ellen smaller line. then, yeah. Alan's line now. But uh, tell them about your traveling during those years for the CDC and how you ended up with a matador suit and an authentic one. Well, I uh, was sent to Japan in 1964. Because they have so many matadors there. That's right. For the 18th Olympiad, the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> and I was there for several weeks. And while I was there, I met somebody. We hung out together. Somebody. I, I don't have to get into the, okay. the somebody, yeah, that's okay? Not, I hadn't heard that. Somebody. And, and then the next time I saw that somebody was in Madrid. Oh. Just one of those things. Oh, yeah. And uh, in Madrid, I went to this uh, antique store, mm -hmm. and it was four stories high. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was living in a 17-room house in Toronto. Oh that had no furniture because the house I moved out of, I had built, and it was one of those modern houses with Danish modern, remember that? Yeah, I like it. And so that didn't fit in the 17 rumor. So in, I had the, the, uh, the what are you, measurements with me, and I bought most of the furniture for that 17 room house, and the matador was one of those things. Now, when you got divorced uh, yeah. from your first wife, Seems to me you only took two things. That's the armoire that's in your office and this matador suit, right? Yeah, and, and, and a car. And a car. Yeah. And then I, because his um, first wife was an incredible artist and sculptress, I asked her if she would make an armature, which is the, the, the form that the matador suit is on. She did an, a, just an amazing job. So I love the whole thing, and it's a combination of his first life, his second life, into his uh, third life with me. You know, also, yeah. the, I was grateful that uh, she made the armature because mm -hmm. no one could have done a better job. Yeah. I mean, it's got act, it's, it's got action it's got to it. But there was one thing missing, and I wasn't sure what it was. What was and I, I stared at it for two, three years, yeah. and I finally realized what was missing. Yeah. So I went to my sock drawer. And I got out a pair of uh, athletic socks, you know, the big, thick, white ones. Yes. And <laughs> I put it, I put it, uh, I put it where the sun doesn't shine. <laughs> can you see me over here? Yeah, there we can you see you. Yeah. Only you. Only you. And then it worked. Because every time you see a matador, yeah, he's he, all dying now. his pelvis is sticking, his, yeah. you know, his pelvis is out. And you see, uh, you know, the entertainment center. There you go. Yeah. Not as nice as yours. Thank you. Yeah. How's that, daughter-in-law? <laughs> hey, I'm going to guess you need a couple socks. <laughs> 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 that reminds me of the story my dad used to tell. My dad used to say, there was this guy who was a total psychology, and we could get all the women on the beach. And so this other guy who kept trying it, striking out and says to the hot guy, hey, can you give me some tips? And he said, yeah, you know, here's the thing. In your speedo, take a potato and put it in there. The women will just be really attracted to that. So the other guy comes back the next day and he goes, I got to tell you, I tried the potato thing, but it didn't work. And the hot guy says, you have to put the potato in the front. <laughs> 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 uh, your dad was great. 
Her dad was one of these guys, an Italian guy, a handsome guy. Oh, yeah. Who always had a joke ready. Well, I, I know one of his great jokes, but I don't have the right accent, so I can't no, do it. No, you gotta let him do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he passed last year, but we've all missed Tony Arminio. Yeah. So, Sue has um, her spectacular syrups on sale for you guys today. I know. I was thinking, I was thinking about the brightening serum. One of my very dear friends is a Chinese woman, Yusai Khan, who lives in New York, Shanghai, and Beijing. And so we went to the Chinese Film Festival, I don't know, it was probably 10 years ago. And that was the first time I had heard of brightening serum because Chinese women love the whiter their skin, the, uh, the, the less marks on it, the better. It's all about keeping your skin like porcelain, like Chinese porcelain. And so we came up with our brightening serum. It's got um, daisy flower extract, which uh, is a brightening serum. Uh, white tea, which is rich in antioxidants and protects against aging and free radicals. And white tea, um, well I just said that. And then vitamin C, which is antioxidant, helps combat aging effects from sun, sun exposure. So this is the thing you put on now first, all right? Because you want to go after, I don't know, do you hate those horrid age spots? I hate them. I hate them and I'm starting to get them and I don't like them. Um, in my next book, I'll write about it, but there are a, a couple of supplements that you can take that uh, like to, from the inside out, eat up the horrid age spots. But um, the topical, this is, the, you're going to love this. You love it. And, and the daisy flower extract smells so good. It's ironic that so many of our ingredients are the names of our granddaughters, because our granddaughters are Daisy, Violet, and Camellia. And uh, so we've got Daisy here. It's true. Camellia is in a lot of the products. A lot. A lot. It's, a, it's, it's one of the base um, foundational elements in a lot of the, the products. Um, but what I love about this is that it just brightens your skin tone all over. So it does fade the, it helps support the appearance of those fading age spots, but it also just rejuvenates the whole look of your complexion. Yeah. It does make your whole complexion Yeah. Work. And you know what? I go through periods where I forget to use it, and then I really see the difference. So this is just going to say that. Yeah, really? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I forget about it. And then, so the next one is... So you put this on, Suzanne, right after your toner. This is correct. the first serum. First one. And then I start layering with the liquid oxygen, the Aegis serum, the bioactive moisturizer, and then the targeted night cream, and, um, and then the glutathione, which I'm going to talk to you about in a couple of minutes, our most expensive product. But man, is it effective. And I use that... I don't use it every night because of the expense, but I use it regularly and I believe in it because I, I'm going to talk about glutathione in a minute. But this coconut moisture oil, here's what's in here. The, the first ingredient is always what we have the most of. So the first ingredient is coconut oil. Then it's coconut derived medium chain triglycerides. Then safflower seed oil, broccoli seed oil, argan oil, metaphone seed oil, raspberry seed oil, nigella seed oil, and sea buckthorn berry. This is so incredible. And so when uh, the ambassador to Germany, uh, Ambassador Gr Grinnell, uh, was living in the embassy, um, he, he loved this coconut oil so much. And uh, he would write me on a regular basis and ask me, is it possible that, and I think he could buy it, but anyway, I gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Now my manicure uses this for my cuticles, whether it be on my toes or my finger. She uses it on my feet. Um, she uses it on my elbows and part of the massage. This, I put a couple of droppers of these in the bathtub at night with my Epsom salts. This is an awesome product. This is awesome. This is really awesome. And it's also like, an amazing facial oil. And I, for those of you who are yeah. into facial oils, I just started using it this year as a facial oil. Uh -huh. Blown away. You know, your skin looks so good. I don't know if it's the uh, Gut Renew uh, 30 Day Challenge or all the vegetables you've been eating, or is it the uh, oil or all the all of the above? But I've been telling you every time you come down here that your skin looks amazing, like really well, amazing. Someone, someone very important in my life, yeah. and someone who is a great mentor to me, told oh. me that all the little choices that you make add up yeah. into the big choice. Her name is Suzanne, 
so much nice. stuff will meet you. It is. <laughs> it's all of it. It is. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the cumulative effect, whether it's like last night I was talking about the cumulative effect of uh, toxins, you know, and what that, eventually your liver goes, I give, I can't, or the cumulative effect of making good choices throughout the day. So this oh, is one of those good choices. Your, your son, Bruce, uses that stuff like crazy. Um, he, we just got some heaters for our patio uh -huh. that were very difficult to build, but he built them. Of course. And um, he, his fingers are so dry and raw that he has been, I mean, literally when he touches my back, it's like Hurts. sandpaper. <laughs> yes. So he has been putting the coconut moisture serum on his hands in addition to one of your great body butters or lotions, whichever one is in near us. Sometimes he puts gloves on and wow. he's been treating his hands and he also was using liquid oxygen, wow. um, which has some great um, healing benefits as well. And he he said to me last night, he, he touched my hand, he said, feel how much better this is. So the stuff works. Interesting so. that you say he put gloves on because when he was a baby, I uh, went to modeling school trying to figure out some way to make a living. And one of the things they uh, taught us was to uh, make a paste of, I don't know, I forget, I know it was Pond's cold cream and something else, lemon juice, and you put it all over, and then you put garden gloves over your hands, and then you tie the garden gloves, and then you go to bed. No wonder that marriage didn't work out. But anyway, maybe that's where you got the idea initially to make your hands nice and soft. And was that with the Seven Up cans in your hair too? And I wore the Seven Up cans. So I Linda Linda Johnson says I have long hair. I put the coconut oil on my hair to condition it. Oh, she's right. Don't yeah. waste a drop of this. Whatever you have on your hands, pull it through your hair. Put put it on. Uh, you know. Put it on any part of your body that you can reach. It's just incredible. Backs of your arms, great for those bumps on the backs of your arms. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and Bruce has those bumps. Bruce, Bruce put, he, he could just put one glove on, he put one, you know, like a plastic glove on, and then he looked at me and he said, this is going to be a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, Carrie Huff, Len Terry. Yeah. Uh, she said, I add the coconut serum to everything, saved my husband's itchy skin. Yeah. And you put it on my legs. I put it on your legs. Yeah. yeah as you get older, your skin dries out and it gets itchy. And they talk about that on television commercials. Here's your friend. I put it's this right on, on your bikini line. And, your and on your bikini line. line. And I, uh, Al, I put this on Alan's legs and then he stopped scratching. Okay, now the glutathione. Glutathione, uh, skin reform. It targets uh, wrinkles, dark spots, uh, even out, evens out the look of your skin tone. It uh, supports your skin structure. It's got three peptides from glutathione, which is one of our body's most powerful antioxidants. It helps transform skin to a youthful, subtle touch. It's also got raspberry seed oil, which it provides omega-3s and B vitamins and yerba mate which nourish, nourishes with a host of vitamins and minerals. What I'd like, what I'd like to explain about glutathione is um, the skin, the largest organ in the body. Um, your skin's the largest organ? Yeah, I'm sorry to say that, Alan. Oh. Your skin. Well, oh. it depends on where your skin is. Right? Well, it does, doesn't it? That's right. And so um, uh, skin needs, uh, the, the cells need power. God, I was reading an article today, again, once again, on the, uh, that you and I are all made up of cells and how important cellular structure is and how important cell health is. If, go, go to our, our site and look up the Senolytic Activator. Man, just once a week you take two capsules. It's like eight bucks a, a month. It's so, I, I could be wrong on that price. I can't remember. But I just know it's like, really, that's all it is. And, what senolytics do, that has nothing to do with this glutathione, I just digress. It, um, the cells as they, because we're made up of cells, as they start malfunctioning, collapsing, and dying, well, it leaves debris, like garbage, in your, in your uh, system, in your bloodstream, in your system. 
Well, you don't want a bunch of garbage in your bloodstream, in your system. Cellulitics and cellulitic activator, which we've talked about on this show before, cleans up cellular debris. It's like a vacuum cleaner for your, your cell garbage. Now, it, it doesn't take a, much thinking to realize that's probably going to be really good for me. And it is. It's a, it's a breakthrough. I wrote about it in A New Way to Age, and I was really proud to present that to you because I think mine was one of the first books to talk about senolytics. Anyway, I so totally digress that it has nothing to do with glutathione other than glutathione um, is a, a powerful cell stabilizer. And if the reason that when your little kids come running in from outside and playing or your grandchildren come in and they're all pink and, and healthy looking, it's because they're making sufficient uh, energy in their cells provided by glutathione. And so this gives your skin in, for lack of a better description, because this is Suzanne's week, uh, energy, okay? All right, so that's... And also, the, if, if the other thing you talked about glutathione is where an important detox system it is for the body. And a detox. And so if you can think about your skin when she's providing this high concentration of glutathione in this product, which is what makes it so expensive, um, it's, it's helping with the anti-aging that happens from pollution and oxidative stress that we are bombarded with every day. Every day. So, every day. That's why the glutathione serum is our most expensive serum, because the ingredient is so expensive, and it's why um, today is 30% off when you use the promo code serum 30 because we want you to be able to jump in and try these products because you're going to see a great result, but the price is a little higher. And, and I only use this once or twice a week because it is expensive and a little goes a long way. So don't use a lot. And you don't have to use it every day, but use it. You'll see a difference. It's really quite remarkable. So Caroline, uh -huh. Sylvia, yes. Sylvia, Caroline. pardon me. I answered yes to so Caroline. Uh, no, I'm it's you know actually I, it's Caroline that I'm speaking. Uh, yeah. So Caroline, Sylvia Mendez said hi. Please also consider going on live on YouTube. That way, it's easier to watch you on my TV. Thank you. Can we do that? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. When you go to YouTube, go to Suzanne Summers, Bye Bye Baby. I just love, I did that in front of all those soldiers. I had so much fun. Anyway, okay, the final one in this offering tonight, and what is it, 30% off? 30% off, the, just these serums. These four serums. Okay. Okay. Advanced complexion serum. You tell them what they what they're getting, John. John. Okay, thirty percent off Don't these. What getting, Johnny? What? Okay, thirty percent <laughs> off these four serums. Promo code serum thirty. Okay, there it is for Insta. Do you know as we get older, my age, your age, Alan's age, Caroline's age, um, our complexion acts up and we get problem skin and things like that. Um, you, you don't think at this age to buy anything for your complexion, but Advanced Complexion Serum uh, could really be your friend. You, get, you try some new uh, cream or something, not mine, but if it, you go outside the organic box, I find everybody who, because it takes 28 days for complete cell turnover, so I always say when you get my products for the first time, only use my products for the month. And then at the end of the month, go back to your chemical stuff. And um, if you want, if you want. But what I find from almost everybody who does that, they say they got rashy, they got uh, uh, the skin acted up, it was, it was almost like yelled at her. And so, uh, complexion serum, uh, let's see, Chinese peony stem cells. You know, we're big on using stem cells in our products. That's what our little pot of gold is, that anti-aging eye cream. It's Alpine Rose stem cells. This is uh, Chinese peony stem cells. Uh, French green clay is in here, which purifies. Uh, so it's a lot of active 
botanicals that are in here. Yeah, and you know, with the nourish, they're, they're, they're not thinking about, you know, I have problem skin in that way. We're, no. we're mostly focused on wrinkles, but some of us, you know, you still get a, a little bit of a, a monthly breakout or you get a little bit of problem skin. Yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're still getting your period or, you know, you still have something that pops up that you're like, seriously, at this age, am I still dealing with this? Yeah. It's really nice to have this complexion serum around. And certainly if you have someone younger in your life, um, you mean if you're a cougar? Botanical actives that are targeted for problem okay. scan, please pass it along. You mean you're if you're a cougar? <laughs> no, I meant like if you have a, a child. Oh, okay. I was gonna a say. Teenager in your life. Okay, okay. So that's what we got tonight. We've got the brightening serum. You you're gonna want that. You've got the coconut complexion oil. I don't think that's what we call it. What do we call it? Coconut moisture serum. I was close. But it's got, got like nine nine oils in nine there, oils. right? We've got the glutathione serum. Awesome. And then we've got the advanced complexion uh, serum. These are... Like Carolyn said... Alec, Alec Defoe is 20 years old and he uses the complexion serum daily. That's oh. awesome, Alec. Oh, okay. Well, um, uh, Caroline said today it's the serum show and, and she said... You know, we forget to, we love these products so much we forget to talk about them. And uh, some of these I forget to use. Well, hello. Hi. 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 You're you know, the other. Beautiful today. Well, thank you. The other night. Um, How do I look? No, I'm just looking at it. Oh, he's. You guys are great. That's wow, what a couple. I know. I know. No, well, no. well um, it's interesting because I don't have full range of motion yet because of my broken neck. And I was working with my. That's, you know, that works for me. <laughs> that way you can't tell what I'm doing. I know, but no, 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 I'm going to know because I learned something yesterday. My physical therapist was here. I have two physical therapists. That, uh, I do physical therapy every other day, and I will until I get full range of motion back from everything. But I was looking at the show that we did the other night, and one of the comments, and I, do, I don't usually get my feelings hurt, and I did, actually didn't get my feelings hurt. It was just a misunderstanding. This comment was, oh my God, she's had so much face work done, she can't even turn her head. Well, I can't turn my head because I broke my neck. I'd like to say effing neck, but I won't because I'm a good girl. So my physical therapist, I showed her what this woman or man or whoever it was reacted to. And she yeah, taught me. Like when you say things like effing neck, yeah. okay, and you're the bad girl, yeah. that's great. Okay, all right, all right. Well, let me show like, you what I learned. You don't want to be like, Milky pure. I'm not. You want to have a little edge. I'm Ducky Mahoney's daughter. I am not milky pure. But here's what she taught me. She said, You may never, ugh, I hated hearing this. She said, You may never get your full range of motion back once you've broken your neck, meaning here to here. She said, But what you do is you lean down and look over. And now I don't look like I can't move my face because I've had so much face work. I am the most unworked on person in Hollywood, right, Caroline? I really am. I, I always I always find it amazing that people can complain. Um, they can complain about us having too many wrinkles or having too much done. So yeah. We just think yeah. as if we got so much done, there might be any wrinkles. Yeah. I, yeah. Love, I love your wrinkles around the eyes. I have them. They're great. It's from smiling. I smile. And I like it. Smile you know, though your heart is aching. Put a little mileage on you. Okay. Smile even though it's breaking. Are you going to sing this evening? No, I can't quite sing yet. Yes, you can. You just did. I did, didn't I? Yes, I did. Yeah. I did. What can you we sing? We were at a, a dinner party a couple of weeks ago. It was so nice. Um, you know, the one thing about this, you get invited to dinner parties for four or six. So we go to these friends' house, and two of the guests are... Because we're not rule breakers, are we? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> No, but I, but I like small dinner parties. And two of the guests were David Foster and his new wife, Catherine McPhee, who's about to have a baby any moment. David is my age. He has, what, eight daughters? No, no. I think he has five. Only five. Okay. Five. Uh, so this will be, oh, this is a boy. This, I think the, the baby's name is Rocco or something. Anyway, um, Catherine McPhee, great singer and she sings she just sings like me I, they, my kids say I have Tourette's because I just out of nowhere I'm just a, a, a 
psalms come out of me. And David said, why don't you sing a song, Suzanne? He sits at the piano. Nothing I love more than singing with David Foster accompanying me. But I know that I don't have full range of motion because when you break your neck, a lot of the repair is right here. But I have, I don't have my usual range, but I have a range. And in this range, it's powerful. So he played a song, I don't remember what song it was, and I started singing and he went, whoa. And it felt so good to have a musician of his caliber, and then Catherine, she said, you have a powerful voice. So that kind of gave me a confidence, and Caroline keeps saying, you can sing, you're singing. So it's, got, it's all coming back. Everything, when you uh, have a, a serious injury, it just all is about patience. And my physical therapist yesterday, she said, you know, you don't cut yourself any slack. She said, you're only four months out from a broken neck and a broken spine. And she said, um, you're doing great. And I, I respond to encouragement. And I said, am I? And she said, unbelievable. You should see the people I work with. She said, you're almost there. So I feel good about that. And I think it's because I started out, before all this happened, really healthy, really healthy. I've eaten right, I've done everything that I can think of to do right. I've clearly done something wrong because I fell twice and uh, had this year. What has this year been about for me? This year has been about learning acceptance. What's that? You know, my whole family is in AA and the acceptance. I accept the things I cannot change. Change the things I can. And for those of you in AA, if you can remember the last part, because my, my sister, who was awesome, said to me the other day, she said, I'm an alcoholic. I, I accept that I'm an alcoholic. I can't change that. And I thought, you know, you haven't had a drink for probably 40 or 50 years, but she still accepts the fact that she cannot drink. She can't. And my father was never able to get to that. But I think we all watched him and went, whoa, I don't want what he has. And so my mother, who was an Al-Anon, and Al-Anon is, is a divinely inspired program. In fact, when my mother died, I found, uh, I found her Al-Anon book. And um, the Al-Anon, it's, a, it's a, jur a journal. And they clearly ask you, if you're an Al-Anon, to write your feelings down, which is the basic tenet of therapy. I've had a lot of therapy in my life. Oh, my mother's journal pages, day after day, were so profoundly, what was the word, tragic, sad. Um, she accepted, and I remember her writing, I, I, I have accepted that which I cannot change. So, as I've been lying here, it's been a year uh, going through all of this for me, I have learned to accept that this has been sent to me for a reason, to learn. We're all sent here in life uh, to learn the lessons that we've chosen to learn this time around. I believe we've been here before, we'll be here again. And so I spend every day, I do not get down. I'm sure Alan and Caroline will both admit to that, that I don't feel sorry for myself. I haven't been complaining or bitching or anything like that. I just every day accept what it is and, I, and find the gratitude that each day is a little better than yesterday. Today is a little better than yesterday and tomorrow will be better than today. And that's the cumulative effect and I am well each day I work towards being more well. You know, even when you were going through the, the hip thing and yeah. the broken neck, etc., we were having fun. We were. We, we were. were. I'm still having fun. Yeah, we were having you know, fun. my beautiful husband went to bed with me for this year? Call me crazy. <laughs> he, no, it's, it's just the most... I you know what? I get teary you know what? when I talk about it. It's the most beautiful you know, you know what half the guys who are watching are saying or thinking right now? What? Well, I probably have done the same thing with oh. Suzanne. Uh, I, have your, I have that full quote if you'd like to hear it. Oh, 
Oh, please do, please. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and most importantly, wisdom to know the difference. Okay. That makes me cry. Okay. Thank you for finding that. Send that to me, Carolyn. Because that's what Warren was saying the other day. I've grown up in this uh, maze of alcoholism. Here, I am love my tequila every night. But I'm not an alcoholic. I bet I know because I, I, I never, I, just, I don't get drunk. I just kind of like. Oh, I've seen you a little tipsy. I know, but I, but what I mostly like about our tequila is our, is the date. Yeah. It's the date. Casa, Casa Dragones. It's the conversation we have. Yeah. But um, for those of you who've grown up in the uh, nightmare of alcoholism, whether it be you or your parents or your spouse or whatever, um, you have to find a way to find the good. And I have found the good. My, I, I, I had the perfect father. Everything I am and learned is because of him. Um, he didn't make it easy. And the first word he taught you <laughs> Don't say that. had three syllables. Don't say the first that. letter was C no. and the last letter was R. No. No. Three <laughs> syllables. Yeah. Okay, so Lisa Netter. Thank you for that, Carol. Uh, that just hit. Yeah. That just hit. Yeah. Lisa, Lisa Netter or Natter said, I love seeing you two together. And then she said, what a pair. How could she see that? What? What a pair. A pair, the two of us. Oh. That was oh, so bad. And oh. have you all noticed? No, I, I married the baddest of the I bad boys. That. Okay. Here, she, Carolyn just saying how her husband makes her laugh every day. You, you make me go, oh, ow. No, I make you laugh. You make me laugh. All day. You do. All they have to do is get naked and you start howling hysterically. Yeah. You know, you are, you are brain is firing at full force again. Mm. And oh, I, I really feel the difference in the shows with your, with how much your knowledge you have in talking about the products. And, you know, listen, you worked all the way through that amazing injury right out of the hospital. She's like, no, I can put on some blush and let's do this. So, um, Control bad Al. <laughs> I didn't realize I, I have like like my physical therapist said you're walking so well. I said ah, there's a teeny bit of a limp. She said oh not from where you came from. I said where did I come from? She said when I first started working with you you were bent over on a walker. Do you know I don't even remember that. Do you remember that Caroline? Oh yeah. I don't. Yeah. Well Well, yeah, I, um, that's the great thing about pain is it's like childbirth, you know, you get over it. And uh, also, in the beginning, it sounds like I'm going to talk about the Bible, but in the beginning, I had to take painkiller. I had to take three different painkillers to get me through the day and the night. I am now down to one daily uh, that was initially 30 milligrams three times a day, then 30 milligrams twice a day, then 30 milligrams once a day, and now I'm down to 10 milligrams once a day, and I know that soon I will be off everything completely. I do not want to uh, be on drugs if I don't have to be. So I've given up the nighttime drug, which is something called gabapentin, which helps with nerve pain. I have a lot of nerve, when they move your spinal, stuff around, they move nerves around. And so I've got a numb here, a numb here, and numb all the way up to right here. And she taught me these exercises. Every time I go by the wall, push against that wall and engage the core and engage it. So I'm doing everything I can do to get to that place where it's completely gone and over. And uh, one of the great things about our Facebook Live shows 
is it took me off myself. It allowed me three times a week to cook for you or talk to you or teach you or whatever. And I'm glad that my brain fog is gone because when the brain fog is gone, the, um, the information is more crystallized. Like, I've really been thinking a lot about the gut-brain connection and how little attention we pay to it. Do you know that when you're using our stuff, this doesn't happen, but if, if this stuff was loaded with chemicals, the chemicals, I'm gonna go through this again, uh, get into the GI tract through the food that we eat or the stuff we put on our skin, not our stuff, but other stuff that has chemicals in it, gets into the bloodstream, works its way down into the GI tract. When it gets in the GI tract, which is your stomach, your large intestine, your small intestine, it, the chemicals eat through the barrier wall of your GI tract. That's what my granddaughters had. That's what your daughters had, Caroline. Ate through the barrier wall, creating these holes, leaks, that's your leaky gut. It then releases into the bloodstream. And now these toxins, and you know this, Caroline, because you're still dealing with it to some degree, want to make their way up into the fattiest organ of all, which is our brain. Our brain is a 65% fat. Now, when the chemicals get up there, uh, it creates a space problem, like too much furniture in the room. And so the hypothalamus, which is essentially the, the command, that hypothalamus and the pineal are the command central of the brain. Uh, the hypothalamus has to shrink, that's called your brain fog, to make room for the chemicals that have taken residence in your fattiest organ, and they're out there, they're happy. The chemicals are going, hmm, yum, I'm gonna eat a little of this, and eat a little of that. And that's where all this ADD and ADHD and OCD and Alzheimer's and um, all these conditions, dementia, all these, uh, uh, dyslexia, dyspraxia, all these things that people are going, where's this coming from? I frankly know. It's, it's, so when I say, these products are good for you. I mean, they are good for you, good for you. You don't want your brain to shrink. You don't want to get to, uh, you know, like, oh, I read yesterday that Tony Bennett, who I've worked with, who I've been on the road with, he's announced yesterday, or his family did, that he has Alzheimer's. The problem when you announce that you have Alzheimer's is you don't even know you have Alzheimer's because you, you, you're not you anymore. Once someone has dementia, or Alzheimer's, they're gone. They're gone. Well, the, no, the problem is they're gone, but they're not gone. Yeah, there they are in body. Yeah. yeah. And so the family then is there to like take care of every need that that body, because that's all it is now, is a body. You don't want to get to that. Isn't it just easier? Is this the answer? No, but it's a little bit of the answer. It's a big part of the answer as far as I'm concerned. I, we were invited to another small dinner party the other night um, and we couldn't go. I, we couldn't go for whatever reason, I can't remember, but the other reason I was glad we couldn't go, it was at a steakhouse that was an indoor outdoor steakhouse. And I knew that this was not organic, that those steaks were just loaded with E. coli and all the crap that uh, a cow eats when it's going against its natural evolution. A cow is supposed to eat grass. And a cow is supposed to eat a gra grass that's not been sprayed with poison and genetically modified grass. A, a cow is supposed to eat graze, grass fed, grazing on the grass. And so I couldn't go to this dinner party. It was a friend of mine who I really like, his birthday party, but I actually, when I had said yes, I would go, I was dreading the meal because I worked so hard to keep all the, the barrier wall all sealed up in my GI tract and then to go out and have a dinner that would wreck the whole thing. So you get my message. You already know it. You all already know it. That's what I love about you. You come here two and three times a week with us and this is not BS. This is the, we, I say this all the time. We walk our talk in our company. And Bruce it's and true. And if you guys are new to Suzanne's brand and you are not aware of Suzanne Summers' skincare products, she goes out of her way to find the finest botanical actives to target, whether it's wrinkles or hydration or skin rejuvenation. And these are some of her top sellers.
selling serums at SuzanneSummers.com. And maybe some of the ones that don't get as much um, airtime because when we put kits and things together, these products are expensive. Yeah. And so it's hard yeah. when you put you yeah. know, a $70 serum into a kit to have something that feels like a value. We've taken 30% off the price today so that you can really jump in and try these products. And a lot of people ask, well, how do you layer these? We don't expect you to use six serums every time no. you're doing your skincare no. routine. Rotate them. Maybe this month you try that brightening serum and you can see how it evens out your skin tone and helps with the appearance of fading dark spots and overall brightening your skin tone. Maybe you get some monthly breakouts and you'd like to try that complexion serum or just have it on hand something comes along that you're not expecting or the um, coconut moisture serum which literally if you read the comments people use for their hair their skin their cuticles bumps on the back of your arm the German ambassador uses it I'm sure he gave some as a dinner uh, party uh, guest uh, gift to Angela Merkel I'm sure he did Um, you know Alan you're always complaining about which is Suzanne's most expensive serum because glutathione is a very expensive ingredient yeah. and she doesn't just put a couple drops in there so she can say oh it's got the power of glutathione which is your masty master antioxidant detoxifying agent she's putting this on topically it, with as much as we're allowed to put in this formula to help detoxify your skin and it makes it look spectacular so and, and you know jump in and try it. pretty much every day alan complains about the spots on his hands he hates it hates it hates it uh uh Al, yeah. Take this upstairs tonight. Okay. Because we have forgotten about using this, and every night and every morning, when you keep it next to your bed, spruce them on and put it on your hands. Okay. Any place you've got here, you've got a couple of spots on your perfect. You've got a couple. Use the brightening serum. You're gonna love this, and okay. then you know that you use this because I put it on your legs. I like rubbing your legs. I know. I like. I like when you rub my. Now, yeah. I'd like to know. How come we get brown spots on our hands? I don't know. It's just. Um, I've heard it's, it's from the sun, radical, but I don't think it is. And not then someone said it's, it's called liver spots. Yeah. Our livers are growing. Because your hands get so much thick. Your hands are always in the yeah. sun. Sometimes your arms are covered, yeah. sometimes your chest is covered, but your hands get a lot of sun. Yeah. And you're an active outdoor guy. You are. And Al uh, puts his face and body in the sun direct sun for five minutes every day and he gets this tan. You can't believe it. I'm Irish. This could never happen to me. I could go to Hawaii for a month and lie there every day and not get what he gets in five minutes. Actually, I'd like to go to Hawaii. You would? All right. I've always wanted to go to Lanai. Even, 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 no, we've been to. Oh, you would love the Four Seasons there. It's amazing. Yeah, no, I know that. I'll go with you. I know that. Although I don't want to travel. Uh, I don't want to get on there. We'll take a boat. They have uh, boats that go there. Yeah. Yeah, go on a boat. Wow. Of course, our last trip on the boat, <laughs> we I, almost died. I, 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 I was watching a news flash today. The CDC said that um, if you travel, you have to wear your mask to, from, on, in. Uh, uh, you have to wear your mask. I would rather stay home. I hate those masks. I hate them. Yeah. I hate them. And this is just me speaking. I don't, I haven't, I haven't been convinced yet that they're the panacea. I haven't. That's just me. This is not, don't do what I do. Don't do, don't do what I do. This is just, what I do is, I just don't, we don't leave the house. So I don't, Why would I leave this house? So I don't have to wear my mask to go to sleep every night? I'm going to Hawaii. Oh. Oh, you are going to a wedding. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it be happening? Uh, because you never know, you know, if things stay open or, you know. Oh, there's happens. no problem with the right group. No, no, there's no oh. problem with the right oh, group. They're, okay. they're getting married regardless of if they can have gifts. <laughs> so, so far, it's looking good. It's looking good. Oh, you're going to look so beautiful. Oh, well, she thank you. The dress she, she showed me the dress she's um, bought for this wedding. One of my favorite dresses that I've had in my lifetime, I loved, 
I love the sex goddesses. I love Marilyn Monroe. I love Jean Harlow. And Jean Harlow, for those of you who don't know who she is, she wore a lot, maybe all the time, this classic baby skin pink silk satin slip dress. It was the sexiest dress you've ever seen. And Caroline showed me the dress that she bought for this wedding. The bride's gonna hate you. <laughs> no, her dress is so can beautiful. Can I just, I, I know, I know, I know. Can I just like, you don't, you, you're not part of this conversation. I just looked at this dress and I went, no one's gonna look better than Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, they're, they're, this is a, a no, stunning you family. You don't have to defend yeah. yourself here. This is your mother-in-law <laughs> who is protective sweet. and, um, anyway. You know, I think if we're gonna keep, <clears throat> We're going to uh, choose a place to get married. Who, okay. us, you and me? It could be, yeah, us. Did it you would, you know. that we have Pardon? done this twice? Well, no, instead of going to, you know, a romantic place like Hawaii mm -hmm. uh, or to uh, Santa Fe, um, or we could get married in our home, we could have a, we could get married in Frobisher Bay. What's that? Frobisher Bay is in the eastern Arctic on Baffin Island. Ugh. It's across the strait from Greenland. Ew. We could get married no. in Frobisher Bay and then go to Greenland no. for our honeymoon. No. Well, it no. would. Well, it, it could be great. No, no. Could be great. <laughs> we we got married at our beach house during the Three's Company's day. Our wedding was. Um, worst day of my life. It wasn't the worst day of our life. It was just. So poorly planned. I get on this show called Three's Company. It catapults to the number one show in the country. Um, I am so overwhelmed. And my all I ever wanted in that era was to marry Alan Hamill. This is all I ever wanted. And I, I got talked into having my wedding dress made. Oh, it's the ugliest dress I've ever. My, you will never see a wedding picture of me. It's the worst dress anyone's ever worn to a wedding, to anybody's wedding. This happened to be mine. And, and your outfit was, mine was the awful. second worst. I'm so sorry. It was awful. So then one day, many years later, And my shirt maybe, was worse. Maybe 30 years later, maybe 40 years And ago. half the people there I didn't like. Yeah, it was all that. It was, that was wrong. But aside, wrong. aside from that. But, but yeah. let me just talk about our second wedding. And you didn't like what they did with the soup. Hated it. So, um... We are in Santa Fe, in the town square, Santa Fe, New Mexico, one of my favorite spots on the planet. And um, there are a lot of artisans there and they make jewelry, they make these kind of sterling silver cups and things. And Ellen found this ring. Put your ring in front of the uh, thing there. Can you see that ring? And he wanted to buy it. And when we got married, he didn't want a wedding ring. And at that time, I was so blown away by the fact that I was marrying Alan Hamill, who I'd wanted to marry since the moment I met him, 10 years prior to that. Nine. That, that I, nine, I didn't question it. But when he wanted this ring, I went, yeah, get that ring. And Alan and I went in the middle of the town square, just the two of us, there are people around, nobody knew what we were doing. And we, we married ourselves, the most romantic wedding ever. And we finished the vows that you and I were making up on the spot, and we both started to cry, and we kissed the kiss of my life in the middle of the town square in Santa Fe, and that's the ring, and it was really special. Wow, it sounds like a movie. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. It, it needed to be redone, and uh, wow, I, I'll never forget that trip, will you, Alan? It was so... It was incredible. It was so right. It was incredible. I think that was the same trip we stopped <clears throat> in Sedona, and which we liked, mm -hmm. and we spent a night there, yeah, yeah. and we had dinner sitting by the creek with all the ducks, yeah. and there was a young um, couple at the next... The story. There was a young couple at the next table, and all of a sudden I noticed that he got up and he got down on one knee and I realized he's proposing to this girl. 
I pulled out my camera and I got it, okay? I got the video of him proposing to his girl, yeah. okay? So I found out, uh, I, I told him I got it. I said, you know, give me your address and I'll send it to you. You know what? He never said thank you. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, a, well, he's a lawyer. <laughs> okay, excuse me. I, yeah, I'm not categorizing. It's a mitzvah regardless. You did a good thing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, well, wouldn't you love to have that moment? Uh, he loved having that moment. Yeah. You brought them a lot of joy. That's too bad they didn't have the marriage to thank you. But yeah. you brought that couple yeah. a lot of yeah. joy. And you brought yeah. his family so much joy that yeah. they got to see. Yeah. Or send money. <laughs> that was like that was like that other video you got, um, which is not a nice story. Where uh, t tell them about the motorcycle. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we were doing <coughs> shooting a movie in uh, Tucson. You know, these are the conversations we have sitting around the kitchen table right. with our family. You guys are so part yeah, of our we're, family. Yeah, we're shooting a movie in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. I love shooting And you know, we love Tucson. Yeah. We loved Arizona. I love Arizona. And um, they, we, were, we were there, I don't know, three or four weeks. And uh, one day the schedule had you <clears throat> up on top of a mountain. <clears throat> Pardon me. Shooting a scene with your co-star. And who you didn't, who you didn't like very much. <laughs> Pardon me. So, and you had to be up there at five o'clock in the morning to catch the sun coming up and blah, blah, blah. So I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'll meet you there later. I'll drive up around nine, 10 o'clock. So I'm driving up the mountain, these long roads up the mountain. There's no traffic and it's a lot of curvy stuff. And all of a sudden in my rear view, I see three guys on motorcycles coming at me really fast. I was probably doing 50. They must have been doing 90. And they went, they went zooming by, boom, boom, boom. And now I have them in front of me and I happen to be videotaping it's my ride nice. because it was so beautiful. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I noticed one of the guys lost it and he fell off his motorcycle on this curve. And the other two kept going. And I called the um, 911 and I couldn't tell them where I was. I told them what road I was on. When I thought, you know, I said, the guy's probably hurt. Well, unfortunately he died. Mm -hmm. And I had that video and I was going to turn it over to a TV station. Then I thought, the parents are not going to want to watch their son dying. No. So it I, was ne the right thing. I, I never did. I never Imagine? did. Yeah, it was awful. Wow. It, it was that awful. That was a while. Anyway. Yeah. You did the right thing. Well, thank and you. Alan is always, he's just always, long before the cell phones, Alan videos everything, everything. He always has. We have. I don't know, hours of his father taking a nap snoring. I mean, <laughs> we, have, we have everything. And that time we didn't have it. We didn't have it. We didn't have it. There. We yeah. Didn't have it. yeah. It was so much more rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good thing you've been doing all these years. I have yeah, We lost I've... so much of it in our fire. I have, no, I have boxes in my office here. No, you don't know how much we lost in that fire. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I do. I know. Yeah. I know. You know what I the, uh Fires, fires chase you once you once your house or uh, has burned down or whatever in your life that you meant something to you and it's burned down. So, what is it that I miss the most from our fire? The house. No, no, I had a file of all the great letters that oh. incredible people had sent me. I have an, uh, two amazing letters from President Reagan. I have letters from President Bush. I have letters from Clinton, because if you're blonde, you'll eventually get one. <laughs> um, I, uh, Barbara Walters. Well, you, uh, told, you, you insulted President Clinton. I did? Yeah. Oh, when I said, damn you? Yeah. Well, we yeah. were we, we were at his birthday party in Martha's Vineyard, yeah. and we were all walking out. The three of us walked out together, mm -hmm. 
And I'm sure the Secret Service was behind. Oh, Hillary was with us too. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just didn't notice her. And you said to him, damn you. Damn you. Right. He said, what? I said, you're in my way. And he said, I would never. <laughs> I hope he's watching. And uh, I said, my book is coming out next week. It was supposed to shoot to number one, and then you come in with your book about Black Hawk Down, and you push me to the side, so you're in my way. <laughs> I mean, I was half joking, but not really. <laughs> and uh, I, I was just having a little fun with him. He is a charmer. Yep. President Clinton is one of these men who's got to bore his eyes through you to see that if he wanted, he could have you. What he learned with me is, no, you can't. <laughs> you have no idea who I married and what he means to me. And um, I said the other night we were out for dinner again. Another small dinner party. It right. sounds like we go out every yeah, night. Yeah, we don't. It's just that it's, uh, uh, our our restaurants have just loosened up a little bit outside, not inside, not inside. And so we went out to dinner with a table full of gay guys because Palm Springs is a very gay town. We call it the gay nineties. To live here comfortably, you either need to be gay or ninety. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was talking to all of them at once, and I said, you know, what's great about for me, being out with a table full of gay guys, I said, I'm married to a jealous man. I said, but he never gets jealous when I'm with a bunch of gay guys or being flirtatious with gay guys. I said, if you were all straight, I'd love to like keep a lid on my enthusiasm about laughing too hard at your jokes and things like that because I'm Al's woman, right Al? Yeah. You just like it that way. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you know what, I'm old fashioned. And I like that you like that. Yep, I do. I, I'm from that that era. That yeah, ilk. I know that's <clears throat> that's one of my weaknesses. What is your jealousy? Weakness? Oh, is it? Yeah. But oh, it's only only when it so comes bad, to you. Right? I'm not I'm not jealous of anybody else. Like I'm not jealous of anything or anybody else. I'm, I don't. I, I've never seen jealousy in you other than um, you spent a lot of time talking to that guy that night. That's only come up a couple of times, but that. I know that, I know that, I don't do that, because that would bother Ed with Bruce. What? Ed with Bruce. Oh, and then there's that. When he compliments Bruce, he goes, hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> do you get jealous of Bruce, Alan? What? Do you get jealous of Bruce? No. No. No, when we're doing shows. It's oh, 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 oh. When you look at Bruce and say, oh, he's a neat just about so the middle of the <laughs> uh, well, I do think Bruce is It looked so like horrible. your tooth just fell out. What? You know, first of all, I have to compliment you on catching it. You, okay, you're Ducky's daughter. I know, I know. You're Ducky's daughter, you caught it, okay? I know. And I'm impressed by that, I know. okay? Right here, I know. I'm perfect. Um, hey, it's 6.04, you guys have done well, it. Wow, wow. Okay. We've got... Come back again. We've got a jillion stories. Okay, here's the you know, deal. Before amazing. we say goodbye, 30% okay. off these four serums. Get them. You'll love them. Oh, if you don't like them, that's send that's them all back. Like we'll give you your money back. Yeah. Okay, you'll love them. You, you won't send them back. Okay. But think about what I said tonight. Think about what I said last night. Think about Whoops. the effect, the cumulative effect of, of toxins and chemicals. Think about it. It could save your life if you start thinking about it and taking it seriously. I take it seriously. I've already had cancer. Um, I don't want it to come back. The, the problem with cancer is that it could come back. Cancer is uh, aggressive and angry, and uh, but I do everything I can. I eat right, I think right, I love right. I, you, you can go through any cabinet in this house and you will not find chemicals. This is what you'll find here with these serums in my medicine cabinet. Uh, I'm proud of the way we've chosen to live our life. And I, I'm proud of it because I don't know why I got cancer. 
I don't know, was it the stress of my childhood? I don't know. I don't know, um, I mean, I grew up, there was no such thing as organic food when I grew up. There was no, no such thing as cancer. I, I didn't know anybody with nobody, cancer growing nobody. up. And nobody ever thought it was a good idea to spray poison on your food. So we made big changes in our life. And um, I only buy organic. I only eat organic if I can control it. It's, you know, if I was starving to death and all that was available, like everything you're looking here on this little table, these are all organic. Um, I go out of my way to avoid toxins as best I can. Am I perfect? I'm perfect in that I don't ever do it um, knowledgeably, but I, uh, there are times when, you know, you've been so hungry, you gotta like take a bite of something. You know, uh, people, <clears throat> some people think organic food is expensive. It is more yeah. than conventionally grown food. But now you've got Costco and Walmart, yeah, who are organic. the two, two biggest sellers yeah. of organic food yeah. probably in the world. And uh, the, the prices are regular prices. And Costco happens to be my favorite store. Yeah. I love Costco. Yeah. And uh, I, the, the only, my only complaint about Costco and organic food, yes. it's not all in one place. No. You okay. Have you have but to. But you get a good workout at Costco. Yeah. And uh, I've gone, my favorite thing is to get a parking spot near the front door of Costco because I love seeing people come out with their shopping carts filled with toilet paper. Well, those, you know, aren't, those aren't carts, those are the flatbeds. <laughs> they're the, really, they're the are flatbeds, they, yeah. They, it's yeah. like, how much of this stuff do you need? It's toilet I'm paper. Very, I don't use a lot of toilet paper. I don't know, we used to have this, this friend that stayed over and she was always running out of toilet paper. I'm thinking, how much of this stuff do you need? Uh, well, she would plug up the toilet with toilet paper. Yeah, she would, yeah it wasn't like poo or anything, yeah. it was toilet paper. So we stopped inviting her. We did. Yeah. I love you all. Our hour is over. Good night, guys. Good night. Enjoy your dinner, We're Caroline. Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see you then. When? Friday. Friday. And give your uh, husband a hug for me, okay? I will. All right. I love you. I love, I love you all out there. Thank you for coming. Good night.